So here I've got an example of a bank account. So I've got an account interface here, and within it I'm, I'm defining the contract. So I'm a bank, um, I've, uh, and I've asked some computer programmers or a software engineering company to provide me with some software to do some useful features. Uh, for example, I want people to be able to deposit, to get their account number, to get their balance, to transfer the balance, and to withdraw money. Some of that behavior needs to go into their abstract account, so that's where all the common behavior should go. And um, any specialized behavior will go into the, into the two types of accounts that I want to have. Usually a bank will have lots of types of accounts, but this is obviously a simplification. So I've only got two types of accounts, the overdraft account and the free account, which should be implemented by the abstract account and which should be implemented by the free account. The common behavior is deposit, get account, and get balance, so that is, is common to any account. The, what, there's only one method here which needs to be imp implemented at the lower levels, which is the withdrawal. Because how you withdraw and what you're allowed to withdraw depends essentially on the type of account you can have. So in, in a free account, I can um, only withdraw up to the amount that I have in my account, whereas in an overdraft account, I can, I can withdraw, it depends on how you implement it, but unlimited uh, or up to a certain amount, depending on, on how much you're allowed to, to be overdraft. Okay, so uh, yeah, so in this case, the implementation would be deposit, get account, get balance, transfer balance would go into the abstract account and the withdrawal would go into these lower levels here. But notice that there is a relationship holds down the hierarchy. So an overdraft account is an abstract account, is an account. Uh, so that's the primary behavior. Uh, abstract account, as I said, implements the, all the common behavior and free account and overdraft account, specialized withdrawal. Um, right, so... So this is what our account interface looks like. So that's the interface right at the top level. Um, yeah, so these are our methods. We've got deposit, get account number, get balance, transfer balance, and withdraw. So notice, as we saw in the previous example, there's no implementation within the interface. Um, it's, you're just declaring what you want the outside, anybody that's implementing this interface, what methods they need to provide, okay? So, that, so that's, that's all that you're doing here. And this is my abstract class, and, I'm, and this is where I'm implementing the common behavior. So you use the abstract keyword to declare this a class as abstract, which means that we can't create an object of that type. And we're specifying that we're implementing accounts. So we need some variables to do all this work. So we need an account number and we need a balance. I've got a constructor. So the constructor is used in this case to initialize the account number. So within the abstract accounts, you can initialize any values that are specified within this, within this particular class. And then when you go to create an object lower down in the hierarchy, all you have to do is use the super keyword and the abstract class will instantiate all those values for you. So that's my constructor. I've got a, so this is the deposit one. So it's very simple. It simply says uh, if, the, if the amount I want to deposit is less than zero, somebody's made an error while they're typing in, uh, like a clerk in the bank, uh, they type in minus something by error then throw an exception if that happens. Uh, otherwise, the balance is equal to the current balance plus the amount that you want to deposit. So it's a very, very simple class. So another one you've got, another method, get account number. Again, very simple. You, all you're doing is returning the account number here. A get balance, again, very simple. You're just returning this variable here. Transfer bar balance. So this is, this is the method that does the transfer balance. But this is an example of a bad implementation of transfer balance. So, uh, so here we're saying, note that there's a deliberate mistake below. So we'll come to that a bit later. So this is, this is one way which you could do it, uh, which, is, which is bad, and, and we'll see why later. So another uh, common behavior one is set balance. So you can set the balance, you can say, uh, basically, you can set the balance in the accounts. It's a very simple one, you just say balance, this balance is equal to the balance you want to set it to. So this is, here's where we implement the specialized behavior. So first of all, for our free account. So the free account right at the bot bottom of the hierarchy extends abstract accounts, which was in the previous slide. So here we're making use of the super keyword, word, like you said, to initialize that particular value. Uh, and now all, all, the only thing that we're implementing within the free account is the withdraw method. So the first thing you want to check is 
The amount you want to draw is not less than zero. Again, somebody might make an error while they're typing in a value. If they type in something less than zero, then throw an exception. And because it's a free account, you can't go below whatever you've got in that account. So, so here you've got if current balance is less than the amount you want to withdraw, then only return zero. Basically, you're not allowing them to withdraw that amount of money. If I've got 50 pounds and I'm trying to withdraw 100 pounds, then that transaction should not be allowed. And so you, return, you don't return anything, you return zero. If, on the other hand, uh, this is false, then we, um, we set the new balance as equal to the current balance minus the amount that I want to withdraw, and I return the amount to the customer who, who wants to take them, their money out. So it's a very simple, very simple method uh, for the free accounts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the overdraft account is slightly more complicated. Uh, so this is a different type of account. It also extends abstract accounts. So in this case, we're creating a new variable called overdraft charge. So you can set this to whatever you want. In this case, it's 10 pounds, I assume. Um, so we, we initialize the value here. And now the withdrawal is a bit more complicated, like in the previous example, otherwise you throw an exception. Then you say that you set the balance, the new balance minus the overdraft charges. So you have to, so you have to take that into account, but you're al you allow the customer to, to withdraw that money regardless. Okay. But, but if they overdraft, if, if they, if the new balance is less than zero, then they've gone into their overdraft and therefore you have to charge them more money. I mean, this is, this is a, an example implementation. Obviously you can implement it in any way you want. You don't have to have a charge if you don't want to. Uh, it's just an example of how you would do it. Now, going back to our abstract account here. So we said that there's a mistake in here somewhere. So let's go. So this is a slide that focuses on that problem. So remember, I've got my abstract account and I want to implement transfer balance. And the way we've implemented it here is uh, we want to transfer balance from this object being passed in here of type account. And the way they've and the way this has been implemented here is I've said abstract account from account. So I'm casting from account to abstract account, first of all. OK. Um, and then I'm saying if, uh, so this is my from account here. Then I'm saying if from account balance is less than zero, throw an exception as you would. Uh, so you, so that you don't want to transfer money from account that's, that's got negative money in it. So in that, you don't, don't want to allow that. Otherwise the balance, the new balance is equal to the balance plus the balance being transferred from the account. Then you set the, the balance in the account you transfer in from to zero. So have a look at that code and try to figure out what the mistake is there. So there's, actually, there's an actual mistake in there. And so there's a logical error that's, that can happen in some particular situations. So try and think about the logic, what's going on here, in these two lines. So I'll, I'll run the program so, you can, so, I'll, so we can have a look. OK, so I've loaded up the bank account example here. Um, I've loaded the abstract account, which includes the method in question. So this is the transfer balance method, including a code, which we saw in the slide. And right here, I have uh, an, a cl another class called use account. And use account uh, is, a, is a simple class which I've created to test the, the bank account hierarchy. So I have a main method here. And what I've done is I've instantiated uh, a number of references so I've created a number of, of objects so account one account two account three and account four and um, and they and they create various free accounts and overdraft accounts so initially they the, there, there isn't any money of them until I deposit 100 pounds into account one so I have a number of print statements here which show us what's going on so um, so I'll just clear this here so, and I have a test transfer. So test transfer uh, is a method which I've created down here to, tr to test transfer of money from one account to another account. So the two accounts, uh, the account to, to which I'm transferring money is on the left hand side and the account from which I'm transferring money is on the right hand side. So here I'm doing a test transfer from account one to account two. So this works correctly. Um, account one has a hundred pounds, account two at the moment has zero. So if this works correctly, uh, after the transfer, account one should have zero and account two should have a hundred pounds. Okay, so let's do a, a quick test. Let's run the program. 
So here, here are our initial print statements here that tell us that account one had 100 pounds and the rest of accounts had zero. And then when I do the, the actual transfer, uh, so before the transfer, account two has zero, account one has 100. And after the transfer, um, account two has 100 and account one uh, has zero. So that works perfectly fine. Now, uh, let's see if we do a little experiment. So let's see if I um, to try to transfer money to the same account. Okay, so, so there are some circumstances where you might want to, for example, transfer money to uh, within the same account. Um, so you might have several savings accounts within your bank account and, and you might want to transfer money between them. So let's see uh, what will happen if I try, try to transfer money to myself. In this in this case so I'm transferring money from account one to account one uh, so I'm going to clear this here and we run so this is what we end up with so before the transfer account one had 100 all the other accounts have zero uh, before the transfer as you can see here two account and from account each have one 100 and that's because um, two account and from account are the same account in this case, so they both have 100. Now, after the transfer, something seems to have gone wrong. Both accounts had zero. So I've transferred money to myself and ended up with zero uh, in my bank account. So that's uh, that's due to a logical error within my abstract account here. Uh, I have a final statement here, which which makes um, which gives which assigns the bank account an amount of zero. Okay, so that's a logical error uh, within the code. Um, so let's go back to the slides. So there are various clues that there's a, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a problem with this code. First of all, even though you can cast to an abstract class, it's not recommended. And it's, if, if, if this exists within your code, then you should think to yourself, I'm doing something wrong here. Okay, casting to an abstract class within your code is, is not the done thing. Another thing is you should always try and program to the interface. That's one of the main principles of when you use interfaces in Java is, is when you can um, program to the interface. So that means that make, make use of the methods that already exist in the interface as much as possible and only, do, only create something new to solve a problem if, if the, a method doesn't already exist to help you solve the problem. Okay, so... Um, so, for example, if I look at my account, uh, my my account method here, I've got a deposit method, I've got a get balance method. Okay, so there's no need for me to make use of the balance variable, just just make use of the get balance method. Um, and if you think about what a what a transfer is, it's it's basically a combination of a, de a, a um, it's a combination of a withdrawal and a deposit. Okay, so there's no need for me to think about how to solve this comp problem. It's already been solved. You just need to make use of the methods that you've already created for yourself. So, um, so, so, so it's solved in one simple line of code: deposit account dot with. So this is my account. Um, so I withdraw. So I use make use of the withdraw method, and I make use of the get balance method. So I withdraw whatever's in the balance, and I deposit it, and that's it. It's one line. So you'll notice in the practical, if you change the code to this you won't have the problem that I showed you earlier on, obviously. So you won't get a situation where you're transferring from the same account and getting zero on the end. So another thing that, you can, that we can do with interfaces, as I mentioned, is you've got your primary behavior of your, of your interface structure, but, you've also, but, but you also, one thing that you can do, you can implement multiple interfaces. You don't, it's not like implementation inheritance where, where you can only extend uh, one class. With interfaces, you can implement as many interfaces as you want. So, so here's an example. Let's say I've got an interface player and, a, and an interface ma manager. The interface player's got a squad number. So if you're a player, then you might have a number on, on the back of your sheet. An interface, the, the manager interface, the, the manager might be able to select their team. So they've got an array of players and, and do something, select their team. So these are two interfaces. So, but I don't know if we still have this anymore. I think in, um, in the past, I've seen several players, when they retire, they're still players, but they're also managers at the same time. So you might have a situation where you have a player manager. They're both player and they're both manager of their team. So, and, this, and because we've implemented this using interfaces, you can do this, and that way you acquire both behaviors. You get a squad number, and you're also allowed to, to, uh, to select the team.